Hello, people. I'm Ginny Metherall, and I am your fourth generation witch. Today, we're looking at my ever popular almanac series for what witchcraft you could do on what day and when during the month of November. So this is one of my most popular series and what I like to do is to give you an overview of the trends of witchcraft that flow throughout the month of November and then we'll look at the nitty gritty days for what witchcraft and you can do and when. So with that said, let's start with our general overview. November, of course, is the start of the new year. It is the beginning of the months of darkness and this starts with Samhain the festival that finishes on the 1st of November. The 1st of November is such a well-regarded day throughout whatever culture you live in, it seems. It is the time when we do look towards the spirit world because November, it is known that the spirits are able to communicate with us because the veil between the two realms is at its thinnest. It starts on the 1st of November and essentially goes through until the 30th. So it is the whole month of November that is looking at communication with other realms. November is the month of blood and bonfires. We start to fight the encroaching darkness with fire. And we have lots of fire festivals in the UK for this, not just at Great Bonfire Night on the 5th of November, where we celebrate the fact that our government did not get blown up, as well as other older pre-Christian festivals, such as the Ottery St Mary rolling tar barrels. And other cultures have things like Diwali, and the Day of the Dead is all about candles and celebrating your ancestors through lighting flames. So November does have a huge tradition of lighting fires. Whatever they may be, this can be as simple as lighting a candle or having a massive bonfire. Whatever you like to do, make sure you light some form of fire. There is a certain amount of preoccupation with death during November, not just with communing with the spirits, but also with the fact that we remember the dead, you know, the Armistice Day on the 11th of November, the Day of the Dead in Mexico. People like to honour their ancestors through the month of November. This preoccupation with death is now reflected in the countryside with the leaves falling from the trees and us being left with the bare bones of the earth. So it is the time to light those fires and chase away the darkness. November is also the month where the wild hunt starts. This runs very deep through the English countryside. The wild huntsman is a spectral figure and with the whistling winds sounding like hunting horns, he's out at night on his black mare, the nightmare, with his wishful hounds baying in front of him. The wild huntsman was known as Odin in the north, Hearn, the huntsman in the south and wild Edric in the west and everywhere as the old devil himself. It is very much a doom laden sight. You don't want to be going around seeing the wild hunt and his spectral hounds. One gruesome tale from round these parts tells how a foolish farmer asked the huntsman what quarry he sought and the huntsman threw down this bundle which landed at the farmer's feet. And as the farmer opened the bundle, he realised it was his own child. So don't look out for the wild hunt. So that is my overview for November. It is a month of bonfires, of wild hunts, and of us really settling in and welcoming the dark half of the year. So with that said, let's get on to the nitty gritty day to day detail. And of course, we're going to start, as always, with the 1st of November. The 1st of November it was known by the Christians as Hallows Mass or Hallentide, meaning it was the day where people honoured their ancestors and those that departed before them. And this, of course, gives rise to the much more well-known Hallowsine. And in fact, the Samhain Festival only finishes at dusk on the 1st of November. The Mexicans, as you know, calls this the Day of the Dead. And the 1st and 2nd of November themselves is like a festival for all souls. It is a really important part of life to honour the dead when we move through into a new season, which is what we do on the 1st of November. 
So therefore, the first and second are the perfect days to honour those who have come before us. And why not venerate your ancestors with a beautiful altar and candle? It was oft believed that your ancestors and those that you loved and had gone before you would revisit your home on the night of the 1st of November. And so therefore candles were lit and placed in windows and these lights which lit the way for the dead to come in were known as tindles. We would also set an extra place at the table to welcome in and honour our loved ones. For we do believe that as long as you remember someone, they never really die. There is, however, a Highland proverb about this particular um, 1st of November because it falls on a Wednesday. And they do say in the Highlands of Scotland, when All Saints comes on a Wednesday, then all men will be afflicted for this year. Oops. What else can I say to that? The Irish also have a saying about the 1st of November, which states that all the gods of the world are worshipped on this day. So if you have a deity that you like to work with, it's quite a good idea to do a bit of worshipping today. The 3rd of November is a pretty good day for the astrologers out there because it is the day when Jupiter, that massive planet of the solar system, is at its brightest. And you'll be able to see it just through binoculars. It is closest to the Earth at this point, in, or it's in opposition or something. I actually don't know, but I do know Jupiter does rule a male energy in us. But this is the lighter and brighter side of that male energy and will bring you great happiness. Now, if you look up to the sky, you know you'll be seeing Jupiter because twinkle, twinkle, little star and planets merely glow. The 5th of November, as everybody in the UK knows, is Guy Fawkes Night. It's also a lot of other nights. There is tipping over the Devil's Stone at Shabir in Devon, which is around the corner from here, where they, uh, a bunch of bell ringers who've been ringing out the bells to keep the devil away, go into uh, a pub and take some beer and then go to a stone and then push it over with some iron bars. And I'm not quite sure why they do this, but apparently it brings luck. We also have the Ottery Tar Barrels, which I have to say is one of the most unbelievable sights that you will ever, ever see. One of my favourite quotes is actually, Ottery St Mary Tar Barrels is one of the most alarming sights that you will ever see, short of all-out war. It's very true. Basically, they fill up these great big barrels with tar and paraffin, set them alight, and then carry them very drunkenly through the streets of Ottery. Everyone is likely to get burnt, killed, knocked over. It, I mean, it's a terrible festival. Great fun. Kids love it. Not so sure that I'm so keen. Now, it is part of this fire festival tradition that we have, as long with, you know, things like Bridgewater Carnival. We are lighting in the year. And I have to say, it's a lot of fun. Bonfires and fireworks with hot dogs outside in the cold. What's not to like? The 7th of November, which is seven days after Samhain, is the day when you should remove entities from people who have been possessed at Halloween. I'm not sure why you have to wait seven days for this. If it was me, I'd remove them immediately. You know, being something that I do, I'm quite keen to get rid of them because, you know, they, they don't do very nice things to people. However, traditionally, today is the day when you will have great success at this. The 10th of November is also known as Old Halloween. A couple of centuries ago, they decided to change the calendar and we lost X amount of days or gained X amount of days. I have no idea. And therefore, the Old Halloween fell on what is we now would say was the 10th of November. It doesn't really work like that because the calendar was just brought in line with the sun, of which I believe it still is. However, a lot of old people did still celebrate Old Halloween Day by divination. So they considered this day to be a day for divination, perfect for having a tarot card reading or even you practising it to yourself. Why not have a go? The 11th of November is Martinmas Day, but it's also the feast of the god Bacchus, otherwise known as Dionysius, and was a bit of a 
scorched day in times past. The new wine from the vines had been pressed at by this point, and you could start drinking it, I imagine. And there was quite a lot of debauchery. And as a result, um, it was then taken over by the Christian church and sold to be St. Martin's Day or Martinmas. And then they tried to make it a bit more sober because you can't go around, you know, having licentious behaviour, lots of drink and maybe a little wine, women and song, as they said in those days. Martinmas Day was then turned into the Armistice Day, where we honour the dead. Now, I don't get me wrong, I think Armistice Day is an incredibly important festival that we should look at those who have fallen before us. However, I do want you to know that it's not traditionally a day for mourning. It is a day for, you know, having a little bit too much to drink. Choose to do with that information what you will, I think. The 12th of November is this year's Remembrance Sunday, which is, of course, a day of mourning. Remembrance Sunday is always associated with poppies, and I wanted to give you an old poppy spell, just because it is in keeping with this day. So the spell goes as follows. Soak poppy seeds in wine for 15 days, then drink the resulting liquid every day for five days while fasting at the same time. You will now be able to make yourself invisible at will. I think this will just put you to sleep, whereupon you become invisible to, you know, reality, I suppose. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how that works. Let me know if you try it out or don't, because I think you just go to sleep quite a lot. The 13th of November is the new moon in Scorpio. Astrologers believe that the new moon is a perfect time to make new plans and new pathways for the coming month. Each new moon is governed by the star sign that it is in at the time. And being in Scorpio, this new moon is all about intensity and sensuality. So should you wish to make plans and look at, say, increasing your knowledge of your partner and yourself in an intimate setting, then great to do it this month. The 17th and 18th of November is the peak time to look at the Leonids shooting stars. It is this year that the Leonids are thought to be one of the brightest that they're ever going to be for you know, our generation at least. And so have a look out for them. They're going to leave very long trails and very big fireballs are going to come down. And what, of course, do you do when you see a shooting star? Will you make a wish? What else? Remember, your wish magic should always be about yourself and not for others. It's an incredibly selfish magic, and those sometimes are the best. The 18th of November is a bit of a weird day. It's traditionally the day to look at your finger. Oh, don't look at my fingernails, but look at your fingernails. Because you can divine a person's character by their fingernails. So let's read out what they actually suggest that you should do. Um, so if you've got short fingernails, you're wicked. If you have small fingernails, you're greedy or crafty, meaning, you know, foxy crafty, not making nice things out of wool crafty. Um, if you've got white flecks, you're very wealthy and have lots of friends. If you've got black marks, you're hated by everybody. If they are long and smooth, you are witty and generous. Narrow and long, you are cruel and fierce. And rough and round, you're prone to a lot of sexual activity. <laughs> so, there we go. I have told you your character with fingernail divination. On the 22nd, the sun enters Sagittarius. Now, Sagittarians are known as having certain characteristics, and I wonder if you can recognise yourself within this. So this is told by an old astrology book. They shall have mercy on who all they see, and they shall seek to travel to unknown lands, whereupon they will return with great gains. But they will have peril at the age of 22, they shall be of good conscience, merry, and be better to others than they are to themselves. Does that sound like you, O oh Sagittarians out there? Let me know in the comments below. So the 23rd of November is the Great American Feast of Thanksgiving. Now, I know 
absolutely nothing about Thanksgiving apart from, you know, you were celebrating the first harvest or something. However, I can absolutely guarantee that there'll be a loads of traditions that people have and some of them will have pagan origins. And so I would love to hear what you do that you think is a bit pagan for Thanksgiving and let me know in the comments below. Then I can make a video of it and produce it for all you lovely American followers because I know absolutely nothing about it. So inform me please. The 26th of November is the day called Stir Up Sunday. Now this is supposed to be the day where you make the Christmas pudding. Now this is so pagan it's not true because you start with 13 ingredients which is not a Christian number, 12 is not 13. You start with your 13 ingredients and you stir them. Each member of the household must be present when you do so. And each stir is done with a wooden spoon. You start with the most senior member of the household and he stirs from the E, starting with the spoon in the eastern point and stirring clockwise. He gets one stir and he can make a wish, which will be granted. Then every member of the household, in order of seniority, down to the most junior, does exactly the same thing and makes a wish. And finally, any visitors that happen to be passing. You fill the pudding with 13 charms, which will define the future situations for varying people in the coming year. This is not a Christian ritual, although the Christians very much took over it. It is a pagan ritual in order to make a beautiful pudding, which you then set alight and burn for the Yule Festival. The 27th of November is the night of the full moon. Each full moon brings its own full moon energy and has special names associated with it. You'll not be surprised to hear that one of the names for November's full moon is the morning moon. North Americans often call it the beaver moon, the freezing river moon or the frost moon because, you know, winter is coming. But I think in the UK especially, the Anglo-Saxons had it as the morning moon. Again, this is a great time to venerate your ancestors. So I know, for example, what my parents, who are long deceased, would love me to visit their grave and pour them a small tot of whiskey under the light of the full moon. Not a bad way to remember them, I think. And finally, we come to the 30th of November. The 30th of November is the last night that the dead will walk the earth until next year. The veil between the worlds now thickens and the spirits cannot come through as easily. The wild hunt is definitely out on the 30th of November. So watch out for that because you don't want doom and gloom coming for the rest of your year. And with that said, that is my almanac for November. Which part do you like the most? Uh, let me know in the comments below. And do you have any particular traditions? I really enjoy reading your comments. So please do leave me one. So if you want to learn how to become a witch, come and follow me on Patreon. There is all sorts of options there for you to take up. I particularly recommend joining the coven, but it's a really good learning tool and we all so enjoy it. And I learn just as much as everybody else does, I think. Go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherill for all the details. And finally, please don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps my channel. And I will see you in another week or so. Mm -hmm.